In this video, we want to look at the graph of a function and how we can use it to solve a polynomial inequality. We want to use the graph of p of x, which is equal to 2x cubed minus 2x minus 3x squared plus 3 to solve p of x is greater than or equal to 0. Keep in mind p of x is another name for y. On a graph, y is greater than or equal to zero for points above or on the x-axis. So graphically, we want to find where is the graph above or on the x-axis. And we can do that by first finding the zeros because that tells us where it is on the x-axis. We set 2x cubed minus 2x minus 3x squared plus 3 equal to zero. We have a polynomial equation to solve. We can solve it by factoring and use grouping to factor. The first two terms have a 2x in common. Factoring that out leaves x squared minus 1. 3x squared and 3 have a 3 in common, but we want to factor a negative 3 out because it's leading. So we would have a negative 3 times x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. So now the x squared minus 1 is a common binomial. We factor that out, and that leaves the other factor of 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. It's factored set equal to 0, so we set each of those factors equal to 0 to get x squared minus 1 equals 0, or x squared equals 1. And by the square root property, that's plus or minus the square root of 1, or plus or minus 1. 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, gives us 2x equals 3 or x is equal to 3 halves. So 1, negative 1, and 3 halves are the zeros of this function. I'm going to plot those thinking of the number line as the x-axis. So remember we're thinking about the graph of this polynomial function. These values of 1, negative 1, and 3 halves are where the graph would hit or touch or cross the x-axis. Specifically, we know also the end behavior of this function. Notice that the leading term is 2x cubed. That tells us that the degree of the polynomial is 3, which is odd, and the leading coefficient is 2, which is positive. So remember, the leading coefficient always tells us how it's going to end to the right. If it's positive, it's going to end going up. Odd tells us that they have to do opposite things at its end, so it's going to have to go down to the left. So we know if we look at the leftmost 0 of negative 1, the graph is going to have to go down to the left of that. And it's going to go up to the rightmost 0, so it's going to go up after the 1.5. So what happens between those two points? Well, each of these zeros come from a single factor, that is a factor raised to the 1. Even though I use the square root property for x squared minus 1, recall that factors as a difference of two squares is x minus 1 times x plus 1. So each factor that produced a solution is raised to the 1. So each zero has an odd multiplicity, which means that the graph is going to cross at each of those zeros. That would mean that the graph is going to cross, so it's going to come down to, from the left of negative 1. It's going to go up to some turning point, and it's got to come back down to go through the zero of 1, and it's going to have to go down and then come back up to cross at the 1.5. So this is just a rough sketch, just using those fundamental properties and features of a polynomial function. But now I have my solution set. I'm trying to find the values of x for which the graph is above or on the x-axis. It is above the x-axis between negative 1 and 1, and then also to the right of 1.5. I can include where it's on the axis because it's equal to 0, so that tells me I can include the endpoints of negative 1 and 1 and 1.5. My interval notation would be negative 1 to 1, surrounded by brackets, 
union bracket, 1.5 to infinity. On a number line, I can shade the regions around those numbers. I'll shade between negative 1 and 1 and put a bracket at those numbers and then to the right of 1.5 with a bracket of 1.5.